Welcome back everybody to the final installation of our Daedalus series. Thank you guys so much for watching and most importantly, Happy New Year's. I hope everybody is doing good. I hope you all had a wonderful New Year's. I know it's just like the end of uh, January now, but you know, life events always take priority. Nonetheless, we are going to be finishing up this wonderful printer. So some things on my to-do list. So the first one being that we need to finish up putting on all of the panels. As you can see, one panel is missing. This panel I just put on. We have the back panel that we need to do a couple items to and um, we will talk about that in just a minute. The other thing I want to do is work on our display. We need some sort of display. This printer came with a display and I don't want to lose that functionality for this printer's new owner. The next thing is an exhaust. So the rear exhaust that this thing came with I think was pretty you know, not intended for ABS prints. So I wanted to create an exhaust system and we can look at that in just a moment. And we have a couple other loose ends that we need to finish. So one of the biggest loose ends is that this printer came with a top hat. So I want to find a way to rigidly mount the top hat to the printer. I had some other ideas, but I found that those ideas weren't all as feasible as I had imagined or had I wished. So we're going to go with rigidly mounting the top hat. Okay, so here is the original display for the actual Daedalus. And as you can tell, it is a panel do. You know, these things are really, really cool. They are still very well used and well respected in terms of displays. And I tried my hardest to get this to work with the RPI that's in our system. I had the correct version of Clipper running. I had the correct version of panel do running on this device. And for whatever reason, it would not run. So annoyed, uh, I decided to give in and purchase the BTT um, HDMI um, for HDMI display for our Daedalus. You know, I decided to make a custom enclosure that perfectly mimics the original design here. And I added some provisions right here for the speaker and HDMI and the USB-C connection here. Um, the only thing that I did is I just added two holes right here for attaching the screen to this back panel. And for attaching the, pack, the back panel to the actual display, I have four standoffs that I put three, uh, or four standoffs that I put four uh, heat inserts into that I could um, mount this whole thing into. So uh, this is the new display. I also kind of like it because it's uh, centered, which is kind of nice for everybody who has a little bit of an OCD. But we've got the new display here, and this is what we're going to use now on our uh, Daedalus. So after doing some research, it looks like the Daedalus originally came with this back panel here, which was, I guess, a cover plate for a BOFA system, which is just an air purification system or air extraction system for harmful chemicals. We don't have a BOFA system because those things are really expensive, but we have CAD and other 3D printers that can help us design something for this. And that's exactly what I took the liberty to do. So here's the exhaust system that I designed that I'm very happy about. And as you can see, it has the same mounting holes as that original BOFA plate. And it's a three part design. So what we've got here is we've got our top case right here held down by two um, little magnets right here. We've got the internal cartridge, which is a dual HEPA filter cartridge, just as you see here. It's got HEPA filters here that are from a Roomba. And here's the actual packaging. These things are super cheap. I think when I bought it, it was like eight bucks for a pack of 12. And I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but yeah, here's a little Roomba case. And then in the middle, you've got your um, carbon pellets. Uh, that you can just find in little pouches like this or just get the the actual nevermore carbon pellets from like Fabrico and fill it all the way up and then another HEPA filter for the back um, This is the actual case. It's very easy to print. It just prints upwards like this and um, I printed this in pet G since it's going to be on the outside of the printer um, and we've got little uh, Mounts right here for the actual magnets as well, and I have a fan on the background on the back right here This is a 60 millimeter fan. It's pretty uh, yeah standard fan that you can get I have two m3 by 20 bolts attaching it to the back right here, and the whole system just slides in really smoothly and uh, Let me get this going right here just like this so that slides in just like this and it's really well tolerance and um, clipped in and then we have the top plate with the little slit uh, going towards the back 
that just clamps down like that. And here we are. This is your whole exhaust system. Really easy peasy. It's a direct uh, replacement to the entire um, exhaust system that's already there. You just put in these holes and you're done. And so yeah, that is what I came up with. Let's go ahead and install this along with a few other things since we're already at the printer. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, welcome back everybody. So this is the entire top enclosure with the panels all put on and it's looking personally really, really good. So one little thing about this top enclosure is this. Uh, in the previous video, I actually found out that I misdesigned this piece, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, and uh, this piece is actually going uh, to, uh, I just needed to redesign one of the pieces for this uh, uh, ex exhaust system and I did that reprinted that and now I have it um, in its correct position and working order so yeah you can see it perfectly fits just the top three uh, spots right here um, and it's just really easy to install right here and it's got the little magnets that really hold the top piece tight and it makes this whole um, you know process really really simple and easy to work with and then boom just sits, sits in just like that I've got the cable coming down here that I'm gonna probably poke a hole through the back panel and have that direct connect to the entire um, to the motherboard right here as for the top hat right here so this piece did come with uh, the deadless after I purchased it and I was trying to find a way to rigidly mount this piece to the whole frame because when I bought it there was no solution for that and what I found laying around is that I have these nice M5 corner brackets and I'm going to put these corner brackets in the front, that front corner up there as you can see and then we've got this one here and then this one there. I can't put it on the side of where the um, display is because the display uses the hole right there and there's not enough space and that display cover is um, cut into the actual acrylic so I can't use that corner which is totally fine three is more than enough really you just need the two in the corner and it should be fine so that is nice because that's a nice rigid way and it's uh you know it doesn't matter about it's indiscriminatory towards temperature because it's all metal so we are good there the last thing to add is just the back panel now the back panel I was going to add uh, a couple holes and get some holes made for the back fans but I found out that there's about a six or seven millimeter gap between the back panel and the actual fans and this top surface is going to be completely enclosed here there is a port right here for some fresh air to come out and while it's not the most optimal setup and um, possibly not the best, but I did find that instead of modifying the back panel and possibly ruining it uh, by using a jigsaw or a Dremel, I want to let the final customer decide on how they want to handle it. I think I test, I looked at the temperatures with a temperature gun while it's running and the temperatures are ridiculously good. These fans overpower everything. Um, all the heat that's being generated so I think it'll be totally fine it might make a little bit of noise and I know it's not optimal like I've said uh, if I had a better way maybe if I had some sort of um, laser cutter or something a lot more precise I would have gone through and made the holes for this but I just can't do that right now which I know is a little disappointing but I wanted to be transparent with everybody and um, I probably won't be doing that but the back panel will be on and the whole system will be fully rigid so there is that I think this is going to be a really good printer so we've got all of these panels and parts put back on and it's looking very sleek very good and as you can see the one thing I am adding right here is going to be the filament sensor which is the sentinel that came with my Daedalus so I'm very happy about that and I'm going to be putting this right here on one of the parts it's going to replace one of these screws right here I just wanted to make sure everything was in its right place and that is pretty much it um yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this whole series with me. I think the only thing that we have left is just doing a couple test prints and comparing the old Daedalus compared to the new Daedalus in terms of all of its features and the things that I have uh, done to it. All right, everybody, I wanted to show my uh, print settings for the actual uh, Daedalus here. And I've just used a normal Voron um, trident as my uh, build plate since it's 300 millimeters roughly and i adjusted a couple of the settings in 
the um, motion abilities. I think I upped up all the speeds. I have a max of 20,000 here and the acceleration values as well. And then something I also adjusted was the height and all of a uh, few other details here. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out is the speed that I'm going to be running everything at. And like I promised in the very first video, I wanted to make the first layer 120 millimeters and then every other layer 250 millimeters per second. I've also used these speed settings that I found to be really, really good for my printer. And yeah, I think we are ready to finally print our, um, our test piece, which we're going to, uh, which we're going to use at Adelina. Here. And this just so happened to be the print that I used on my first um, version of the Daedalus. And I've hidden the time here because it is quite a significant amount more, um, or actually quite a significant amount different than the old uh, print times. So let's get this thing printed and let's get it going. And then once it's good, let's take a look at it on the um, camera and see how it all does. So we've got the printer right here. You know, I moved the camera to the very top. All right, here we are. Let's get the print model started. And let's see how this all goes. Okay. We're going to see how this all goes. And we will get this bad boy started here soon. Oh, and if you were wondering what that clicking sound was, I had one of the doors of the cable guide just like... Uh, laying right here on the floor and it caught on the rail and it made that snapping sound. Everything is working fine and correctly. We are just now letting the bed uh, or the nozzle get to a safe temperature to do our homing process and we will go to homing. Great. And we've got just a huge roll of some gray PLA going and it's going to do its whole sequence and we will be back in uh, a little bit of time and I kind of showed you already a uh, little sneak peek, but let's uh, let's do it. All right. Oh yeah, look at those perfect first layers. And here we are. Okay, so the print actually finally finished and it's looking pretty good. This is the original Daedalus print from 2020 when I first bought the printer. So here it is. I wanted to show a couple areas, specifically the bottom surface, you know, some of the um, overhangs right here, the wing. I don't know if you can kind of catch that, but there is a bit of a repeating pattern on the wing right there tail looks good all of this area looks good I actually had to dust this thing off and you can see that same resonating pattern right here and this looks pretty good I wanted to have a comparison print with my uh, v2.4 that I have and my v2.4 has a CPAP system so so all of the overhangs are really crisp and well done and you can see on the wing it's like one weird line I think I had a pause print there but Everything else came out pretty much perfect, as could be. And here is the uh, here is the print from the new 2024 Daedalus. And yeah, I mean, the wing looks perfect. Um, the first layer, beautiful squish. Look at that. You don't even see the lines. It's gorgeous. That was a little piece of dust from my desk. There is a bit of stringing, but I will say that the stringing is from my uh, PLA being wet. It's nothing to do with the uh, retraction settings. And if anything, it's just a retraction setting. So really, really easy. The wing came out beautiful. And look at those under areas, man. That looks amazing. Almost better than my CPAP. Almost. Wow. I mean, for just a stealth burner, it looks pretty great. Here's the actual head, lots of detail. Here's the neck, lots of detail. Here's the other wing, wow. Really, really good, I'm very impressed. And you can see, let's see if we can get some, some layer stackage. It's looking really smooth, 
really, really smooth. And it looks perfect on the honestly the outside of the bodies look really good so that is amazing now the most important part is that when i printed this back in 2020 this piece alone took almost five hours bro this was ridiculous and this guy took an astonishing two hours and about 40 minutes which is amazingly fast pretty much twice as fast as the old printer so we can conclusively say that all of our upgrades bringing it into 2020 were very much a needed thing and now they are perfect so i'm very happy with this printer yep yeah, and i will be selling that printer i have just not enough space for it in my current location and i want to sell it to somebody who's local to my area and is going to have a lot of good fun with it it's just ready to roll really good printer obviously look at this quality it's perfect you could probably sell these parts if you ever wanted to but yeah this printer is doing me great it's wonderful and like i said the time differences really make this stand out i mean it's a beautiful uh, extruder upgrade, linear rail upgrade. The, the, the bones of the printer are great. And now that we uplifted the speed, um, it's doing even better. If you wanted to go even crazier, you can add a CPAP so that you can print this way faster. We're at a place right now, and we've been here for a couple years in the 3D printing world, where the hardware will completely outpace the hot ends. And we're just trying to catch up with the hot ends. Um, the hardware could push you know, 100,000 acceleration, but there's no real hot end that can handle all of that. Maybe the Goliath, but that's a lot more modding that you'd have to do on this printer. And I just wanted to take a minute and just show what this printer looks like now with the full top hat, full enclosure, the kinematic bed, um, the cables, everything. We've got the exhaust system in the back working. We got the screen right here looking all snazzy. Everything fits perfectly. And yeah, I'm very proud of this printer. It came out beautiful. Thank you guys so much for watching this whole series. I appreciate it. And let, let's take a look at the um, Orca Slicer settings in just a second. Okay, I also wanted to show you guys a, a link uh, to where I've got all the files uploaded. I've uploaded everything um, that I've done and I've, uh, yeah, I've kept all the STL files, all the step files for the whole project here. Uh, as a lot of people wanted to know how they could, um, you know, look at the files or modify them if they needed. So I wanted to upload everything here. I even uploaded the drawings that I sent to uh, PCBWay to have all my stuff uh, machined out properly. Uh, speaking about machining, the tool head, if you remember, the back piece had a offset uh, hole for the end stop. I've measured out the end stop correctly. And um, if you have the 2020 version of the data list, it should be a drop in replacement for the end stop. So it'll work out uh, perfectly. And that has been updated in the model. And I've got the STLs for all of the parts from the HDMI screen to the filtration to the little chain adapter. Um, yeah, everything and anything that you need and I've got this all updated uploaded here along with a link So thank you guys so much for watching the whole series and I really really appreciate all that you guys have done and um, Yeah, let's go on to the next series, which I am also very excited about. All right. I'll see you guys there